Hi everyone, welcome to the next Ask Tom TV episode. Today we're going to talk about something that seems really simple, that is not null, when a column is not meant to be null. But there's actually some subtle variations, some subtle nuances you have to be aware of, which we covered in an Ask Tom question, so I thought I'd show them to you here now. Let's switch to SQL Plus. You can see here I've created a table with called T, it's got X and Y as columns, and as you can see from a standard describe command, they're both nullable columns. And we might have you know, missed that as an oversight, and we might, might want to make the X column not null. So after the fact, what we might do is add a check constraint. You know, check X is not null. That seems to be what would be required. And as you can see, if I try insert a null value into T, the check constraint fires and seems to be doing the job. What's a little bit interesting though, is when I do a describe on the table again, notice that SQL plus doesn't seem to have picked up that fact. It looks like SQL plus says, hmm, the this, this system is still actually nullable. So let's do the opposite, the conventional sort of means that we say alter table t modify x not null, even though that check constraint is there. Now when I go do a describe, you can see that it says x is not nullable anymore. So there's obviously something slightly different between adding a check constraint of not null and just modifying a column to be not null. Notice now also that when I do an insert statement, I get ORA 1400. It's a different Oracle error message, actually, when I try to do this. It seems that a check constraint of not null is not the same as a declarative statement of not null. The problem that comes with just doing modify x not null is we've effectively created a constraint with a system generated name, sys underscore c001, etc. That might not be something that we want in our standards. So let's drop the table and recreate it again. And let's have another look. This time, there's a slight variation I can do on the modify statement. You can actually do modify x not null at the same time as giving that constraint an explicit name, in this case, x not null, which seems obvious. If I drop the table once more and add the check constraint as we originally had, just check is not null, is that such a big deal? It still seems to work. We can see I, I, I'm prohibiting nulls from being put in there. It actually becomes critical when performance is looked at. Let's put 10,000 rows in there and commit them. I've gathered some table stats and I've put an index on that table now. So we have an index on the X column, the one where we've added the check constraint saying not null. Let's do auto trace trace only explain and see what happens when I try to select count star from T, count every single row in the table. Well, it does table access full, which we might expect. But can we do better? Let's now add the declarative version of not null, modify x constraint not null. Let's now rerun that execution plan. Now select count star from T, does index fast full scan. That's a different plan and most probably going to be more efficient because the index is going to be a smaller structure than the full table. But notice there, just having a check constraint of not null was not good enough to actually get the optimizer do that index fast full scan. We actually had to declaratively say that column is not null, whether we had a named constraint or a system generated name. So there you go, not null is not as simple as it might seem. Always opt for the declarative version of not null to give the optimizer the best information about your data. See you all again next time on Ask Tom TV.